January 19th, 2016. The time is 7 p.m. and the regular meeting of the Greensburg Board of Zoning Appeals is called to order. If you'd all rise and face the flag and recite the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. John, I'd like you to call the roll. David? Here. Richard? Here. Roy? Here. Steve? Here. Okay, now I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Chris Tebby, city attorney, and he's going to conduct the election as president. The new year, we'll need to elect officers for the Board of Zoning Appeals. 2016, so I would entertain any discussion or nominations for a person to serve as president for this year. I'd like to nominate Roy for president of this year. I have a nomination made of Roy on the floor. Give me a second. And a second. Any further discussion or nominations? David? Yes. Richard? Yes. Roy? Yes. Steve? She is. Thank you, gentlemen. Chris? Now entertain the motion that we nominate someone for vice president. of us are in our 60s. It's not a good year to be 60 so far. So. Uh, I do have in my 60s. So. <laughs> yes, I can. I'll say. Okay. Nominations have been made and seconded. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll close. And John, would you call the roll? Steve? Yes. Roy? Yes. Richard? Yes. David? Yes. Okay. Thank you, John. Now, we're going to approve the minutes from December 15, 2015. Those were emailed to everyone. I do not have a copy in front of me, but I believe that Ron has some additions and corrections. Yes. Uh, item 1, Fuel Master, the name reported as the representative is reported as Neil, and I believe that should be A Neil, A N I L. Yes, sir. Um, and further down, the uh, next to last sentence on fuel masters, I would suggest that it should read, Ron May does not think putting it on exterior would be allowed and recommends putting it. We would like to recommend that you strike out on present parking spaces and leave north of building but not in any parking spaces. John, I can give you my notes when we're done, if you'd like. Sorry. I can give you my notes, if you would like. Um, item three, it, the minutes are correct in that it said the area greater than 250 square feet, but in fact, that was an error I made on the agenda last month, and I think during the meeting, I indicated that greater than 220 square feet, which is what our ordinance says. I don't know how you correct that one exactly because it's not exactly wrong. It isn't fully right either. Um, the last, next to last sentence, um, Councilman Glenn Tebby stated that four or five councilmen did not support the sign and said he thought the, I think we should strike surrounding property and replace that with thought the property was zoned B3. It was the property itself that he referred to. And in item number six, uh, 
the Andy Scholey request. Um, the first sentence uh, says, uh, City Zoning Ordinance all at 212 West Main Street as required for not landscaping parking areas. His request was to not landscape parking areas. And that's why I had it. I entertain a motion that we approve those minutes per Ron's changes. Second. Motion's been made by Rich. Do I have a second? David seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Hearing none, the minutes are approved. Now we have old business. Item number one, Reclaim Yourself LLC is requesting a permanent permitted exception to operate a wellness and sports performance facility out of property located at <coughs> excuse me, 1413 North Liberty Circle Drive East as provided by statute 155.045B. The property is zoned I-1 light industrial. Before I start with this case, let me first ask each of the members of the board as much as possible to remember that we're recording sound of the meeting and speak into your microphones as best you can. And to the public, as you come forward to speak, please come to the podium, use the microphone so we do have an audio record of the meeting, and please state your name, and if it's a uh, difficult name, please spell it for the benefit of our secretary. Um, Reclaim Yourself LLC had a petition before the Board of Zoning Appeals last month requesting a permitted exception to operate a training facility in an I-1 district. Um, the property is located on Liberty Circle Drive East, just off of Vandalia Road here, and the property in question is right here. The uh, property belongs to McCammock's Homes, and I believe that McCammock's Homes is renting the front portion of the building, is it, or is it the entire property? The front portion is what they're okay. like to lease. And um, they are proposing to operate a um, wellness and sports performance facility that would uh, provide large group training, private training, corrective exercise, nutritional consulting, junior and senior high sports performance training, online programs, programming and consultation. Um, as we're probably all aware, this particular development has a very mixed uh, bag of uses in here. We already have at this location right here a gymnastic studio under construction on this site right here is a cheerleading and gymnastics uh, training facility and some indoor uh, recreation. So in many ways this requested use is not terribly dissimilar to what else is going on out here. Uh, this is a, an office property here. We have some individual storage units in this location. We have a office uh, building here and we have a retail sales store here more uh, storage units here. We have an equipment um, sales and service facility here. And finally, I believe this is an agricultural sales facility here. The uh, previous meeting, you continued this case because there was no representative of the petitioner. And I believe we have representation this evening. So with that introduction, I turn it over to you. James Ogle. And you're wanting to do this to basically what it just said in the last statement, a sports performance facility? Yes. Okay. Qu 
questions from board members for Mr. Ogle? How many people do you think you will have working at that facility? As far as employees or members? As far as employees? Uh, I would say max two or three employees at a time. And how many people will you, do you anticipate on uh, visiting and using your facility? It's a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it'll just be one-on-one -on -one consultation or private training. But the group classes, we will cap at 15 individuals. Ron, is there sufficient parking there? Uh, we haven't. We haven't dug into the parking, but there is a, a lot of space on the north side of the building, and I cannot envision that parking will become an issue. Uh, Larry showed me. Okay, so it looks like they could have up to about 50 parking spaces. I okay. think that would be excessive, quite frankly. Ron, you can keep that if you want. Okay, thank you. All right, that was my concern whether there would be adequate parking for something like that. Uh, are you just going to use the one building? Is there another building on the west of that? I'm just, uh, the, the front retail portion is over, over leasing right now. Okay. So would this, ha this just have to be contingent on that one front building then, since we're just exception? Yeah, just, well, whatever the address given was, I believe it's, that, that building, I think, has just, am I correct, Ron, in assuming that that 1413 North Liberty Circle is just the building in question. There was and another property, there's something else on that, I can't remember. At this point in time, that is the address for that parcel. Uh -huh. If we have multiple uses, then we will issue multiple addresses. Okay. Um, the front portion of the building that I believe these gentlemen are leasing uh, from what Larry just handed me is 3,600 square feet. And then there's 12,000 square feet in the rear of that particular building and another 4,800 square feet of storage in another building on the west end of that site. So that's what that west end of the is. Okay. Any other questions by board members? Anyone here from the audience to speak on this petition? Hearing none, no more questions for board members. I'd entertain a motion that we approve Mr. Ogle's request. I'll make the motion. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the Reclaim Yourself LLC permanent exception. <clears throat> Pardon me again. Um, John, would you call the roll, please? Steve? Yes. Roy? Yes. Richard? Yes. David? Yes. Mr. Ogle, you're set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Under new business, Joseph Enneking doing business as True Blue Autos is requesting a variance to place a second freestanding sign at 1661 North Michigan Avenue in a B3 heavy commercial district. The placement of the second freestanding sign would result in a total of two freestanding signs, which would be one more one greater than permitted by Ordinance 155.074. The property in question is located on North Michigan Avenue, just southeast of the new Vandalia Road. Vandalia Road, for those of you that may not be familiar, used to come across here. This portion of the road has been removed, and Vandalia Road now comes out around here and connects with 421 of North Michigan Avenue there. Our ordinance for a B3 heavy <coughs> commercial district permits one sign per street frontage. Um, 
unless there is 700 feet or more of street frontage, then the second sign would be permitted provided it's 300 feet from the initial <coughs> sign. This particular property has roughly 600 feet across the um, North Michigan Avenue frontage, so they don't quite meet that criteria. The Henneking Body Shop has an existing sign generally in this area right here, and the request for this sign is somewhere down here towards the end of the building. Um, they have provided, the petitioner has provided this statement. Uh, given the dimension, location, and content of the sign, we believe it will not cause damage or be harmful in any way to the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare of the community. It is just our name, logo, and arrow. Uh, B, the size and content of our sign will not have <clears throat> take away the value of the surrounding area and properties or interfere with their daily routines. And C, due to the size of the road frontage and length of our property, as well as being a separate company, we find it adequate to be able to have the same amount of signage as our neighbors that fill the same amount of property. And finally, this is the sign that they are requesting. It would be 10 by 10 or 100 square feet and have a height to the top of the sign above the ground of 25 feet. sign itself, if it was not the second sign on the property, would, that would be in compliance. Am I that correct? is correct. I, I believe that's correct. Okay. I thought so. just wanted to clarify that. And approximately how far would that sign be from the other one? You know, I didn't measure that, but I'm thinking in excess of 300 feet. It is, there is a good amount of distance. As I said, um, this whole frontage here is close to 600 feet. The first sign is up in here, and the one they're requesting would be down in here. So I believe that to be over 300 feet of separation. <clears throat> Any other questions from board members? There was an existing sign there at one time on that end. That is correct, and that's where they would like to put their new one. Yeah. And this goes back to when we allowed them to remove that sign or something. We, we, there was some, I remember this being before us before. And I tried to look it up and I couldn't, couldn't find it. That was before my time? Yeah, I think we allowed them to move the existing sign to where the sign is now. From the location <coughs> right. down in here, that they're asking right. to come back with a second sign. Yeah. Okay. That's how I remember. My memory gets faulty sometimes. That's that part of being in the middle six. Yeah, I'm sure it is. <laughs> <coughs> Any other questions from board members? Anybody from the audience here to speak on this petition? Gentlemen, how are we doing? Um, my name is Ted Hinkle. I'm the uh, general manager at True Blue Autos. Um, like I said, you were actually correct. That's what had happened. The sign did get switched over. I think it had happened. It came down um, during the tornado, I believe, back in 2011, and they actually ended up moving it to the other side of the building uh, where they're now operating out of. Um, True Blue Autos, a new company on, the, on that side of the building. Um, as we said in our petition there, we believe that the, um, you know, having it being two different businesses and things like that will actually, we believe it'll enhance the value of the property and probably the surrounding properties as well. Uh, as you kind of saw with the sign there, um, our logo kind of modern, a little futuristic, we believe that that will kind of enhance the again, surrounding properties. It's not going to devalue them in any sort of uh, manner. We don't believe so. Um, and again, I think it will definitely be something that's eye-catching, and uh, we're hoping that 
will maybe attract more consumers and bring some more commerce to Greensburg City. So, um, anybody have any questions for me? I do. Um, yes, sir. So, True Blue will be leasing the, that part of the building from Energy Council. Correct. We're currently uh, leasing it from uh, property from KNLE. Anyone else from the audience here to speak on this petition? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion that we approve the request for the second sign. So, they have made the motion. Do I have a second? Steve seconded. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the petitioner's request for a second sign. John, call the roll, please. Richard? Yes. Roy? Yes. Steve? Yes. David? Yes. There you go, sir. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Third item on the list this evening. Fuel Master LLC is requesting <coughs> a variance to place more wall signs than the two permitted and with a greater total area than the 42 square feet permitted at 106 South Michigan Avenue in a B1 Central Business District as required by Ordinance 155.075. Ron? As you uh, recall, those of you that were here last month, the uh, petitioner was here at that time requesting a dinosaur, a fiberglass dinosaur as a sign at the location in question and you all approved that and at that time we discussed that the existing signage on that property had been removed over a year ago and therefore the non-conforming nature of the signage relative to our current signing and relative to our B1 zoning designation or district um, they were in the situation of starting over on their signage. They would be permitted one wall sign on the north on the South Michigan Avenue face of the building and one wall sign on the Main Street face of the building and they would also be permitted one pole sign on the South Michigan Avenue side and one pole mm -hmm. sign on the Main Street side and in fact that property had had a pole sign pretty much on the corner that somewhat served both streets and that's what they are requesting um, now they are not wanting any additional uh, freestanding signs. In our previous meeting in December, we also, I think it was December, had a case from the CNG people up on North Michigan Avenue that I think points to the fact that we may want to encourage Plan Commission to revisit the sign ordinance as it relates to convenience stores slash fuel uh, selling or dispensing facilities that uh, we see around the, the country and around town in general. Um, we may either want to define rules specifically for that one use or we may want to clarify what constitutes a sign. The thing that happens with the fuel storage or the convenience stores and the fuel selling operations is they often want signage on their building and they have uh, logos, therefore signs, on their canopies and on their fuel dispensers. So, um, and I think, Roy, you had indicated last month that maybe we never intended to try and regulate the dispensers themselves. Correct. Um, so we may just need to ask Planning Commission to work on cleaning that up so every time one of these comes along, they aren't in here before you. Um, property in question, as I said, is here at the intersection of Main Street and South Michigan Avenue. This has been a convenience store for a number of years. The most recent iteration was Gulf Fuel, and before that it was, I think, Shell. Um, so the use would be consistent with what had been there, and um, the signage that they're uh, requesting is probably not radically different than what had been there before. Um, this is a rendering of what um, 
it would look like the uh, dinosaur here on the uh, South Michigan face of the building would be considered a sign by ordinance and then the demo mark here. They also have a dinosaur on the end of the canopy and a Sinclair on the South Michigan face of the canopy and then on the uh, south end of the canopy there's another dinosaur. And then in addition to that, they have the Sinclair branding at the top of each dispenser and some more some more branding on the base of each dispenser. Rather than trying to figure out how many signs that really is and how much area it is, I bring it to you as a package for your consideration. Um, and I think that may be the easier way to handle it. The other issue is this is the frame of the existing sign and they're wanting to reinstitute that, put new face on it. It comes to just under 100 square feet in our ordinance on a B1 for a freestanding sign. Well, it's actually a little bit unclear again because of the body of the ordinance, it does not refer to Appendix 1. But if you look at Appendix 1, there is data for B1, and that data says that a freestanding sign can have a maximum area of 50 square feet and a maximum height of 18 feet above the surrounding ground, and this is about 30 foot to the top of the sign. So in addition to the question of the number of signs and maybe the area of signs, there's also the question of the area of the freestanding sign and the height of the freestanding sign in the B1 district. What is the height of the, what is the height of the freestanding sign? The permitted height is 18 feet. 18. And this one would be 30 to the top. There are some more graphics here. This is the, um, the wrap that they would like to put around the canopy. This would be the long face or the uh, South Michigan Avenue face. And I believe this is the Main Street face of the canopy and this would be the south end of the canopy. And this is the building wrap. On the Main Street end of the building, there would not be anything, just some <clears throat> graphics. On the north end of the South Michigan Avenue face would be the Dino Mart sign with the dinosaur in the middle. And then on the, I'll call it the north side of the old service bay, would be another logo of the uh, dinosaur. And then this is the freestanding sign. Here's a picture of what's there today. And here is the rendering with the um, Sinclair ad, ad, added signage. And, and if anybody cares, these are the dimensions in inches. And that whole thing comes to right at 100 square feet. And I'm not paying $8.88 for fuel. I refuse. <laughs> 88 cents, maybe. Maybe. Before long. <laughs> today, today in Michigan, 47 cents a gallon. <coughs> I Some remember money. that over the weekend, yeah. We are going broke because of that, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to your discussion. When we, I served on the sign committee and when we <coughs> did that, we talked about the canopy and, the, and, and that, whether that was considered a sign and, and that. And my, <coughs> My remembrance of that is that we weren't going to count that against someone as a sign, but I can't swear to that because I don't have those minutes right in front of me to look to it. And there was much discussion about different things. I know that for a fact that we didn't want to count menu boards. Okay, when you pull into a place and they have, you know, sandwiches three for a dollar or whatever, we weren't counting their little, the sign that you order off of. You know, when you go to McDonald's, let's say, that was to not be considered a sign, okay? As far as the or as far as the sign ordinance goes. Now, as far as the freestanding sign and the size of it, that, I think that sh should have said refer to appendix one. I think yeah. you're probably correct. You know, I think that's just something that we missed putting in there. Um, so that part of it would, because it's bigger than what's permitted, that would have to come well, all of it has to because we didn't clarify it, but I, I really think that 
as Ron said, we need to get the plan commission to adjust the wording on that so that every time we put up a right every time a gas station comes in and wants to cover up stuff and they put a new thing that says my speedy reward card you know that that's not a that's not really a sign that we're trying to well anything on the dispenser itself right exactly is the product that's what the product is. that's not <coughs> advertising Right. It's, it's to help the consumer that's yeah. there know where to put his swipe his card at and that that wasn't but we didn't really spell it out so it does it is a sign you know because what we need to address <coughs> that issue I don't know the sign to me looks how much taller is that than the existing sign is there then is that it is the same height as the existing sign okay but it exceeds the height permitted in a B1 district right. by the table by 12 feet. Right. I understand. I, I just was trying to yeah. get a visualization yeah. um, to, with the existing. If you look here, they're kind of pictorially represented side by side, <coughs> and they're intending, and I'm putting words in your mouth, but you're intending to use the same structure. Same stuff too, yes. And simply put new face. Yeah. And had they not, had, had they taken the old sign down today and put the new sign up tomorrow, it would, would have been no question. No permit involved, no anything. Right. But because of here or whatever. Because of time had lapsed that it lost its grandfather status, if you will. Yeah. Questions from board members? business than it is an empty building. The fact that the, the big sign is being replaced is the same size as the old sign. Uh, I don't have any major problems. Like you said, if, if things had worked out different and that we'd just be talking about, you know, one going out of business yesterday and one going in today, we wouldn't even be here on this yeah. issue. So. But, but, you know, I haven't been on this board very long. This is the third one already that's come up the, uh, that we had to look at because of canopies and, and signage on storefronts. And, uh, this one's on two different frontage roads there, so it's got a little bit more area. But if we could get the planning commission to take a look and address that and, and make it a little bit more. Yeah, clean up, and clean up the word verbiage. Yeah. As as a board, could we officially make a request that yes. the planning commission yes, we can, consider this? We can we'll do that after we hear this petition in the next section we'll that will be under other items of interest to BCA members. Okay. Right. Is there anybody from the audience here to speak on this petition? Yes, sir, if you come forward to the podium and state your name, please. Joe Pastagal, P-A-S-T-A-G-A-L. I just have a couple quick questions. Is this going to be 24 hours, this station? No, sir. As of now, it's going to be from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. And uh, all the, 
the signage, well, I understand this will be lit, but uh, the canopy and all that be lit they're putting also. LED lights. They're putting LED lights and they're making sure that it does not go on to the neighbors or it goes away from the street. Okay. And if anybody has an individual reason, they can welcome to come and talk to us and we'll make sure it fits in. Okay. Because we like to live in the neighborhood. It's okay. very important to us. And uh, let's see. Uh, and uh, the dinosaur, are you going to put the dinosaur in some place? You were talking about a dinosaur uh, last uh, meeting. Is that, uh, is that still going to be placed somewhere? I have met on site with uh, the operators of the business and um, We have agreed that right here on the corner of the building where there is not a parking space oh, okay. is where they will place the dinosaur. Yes. Oh, okay. It will not be a hazard for safety okay. or it will not be a distraction. Okay. Well, that's uh, <coughs> will that be lit also? I know, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. That was it. All right. Thank you, sir. Anybody else from the audience? I just wanted to, before you, uh, gentlemen, you wanna, since uh, Greensburg is the first place in India that's getting a dinosaur, this is just a token of, uh, you can put it in City Hall or somewhere. Okay. Since you're the chairman, I guess I give it to you. All right, thank you. We'll make sure that we display that somewhere appropriate. I'm getting Mayor Dan, and okay. we'll put that somewhere, since we're the first in the first one in Indiana. That's something we can be proud of, I think. All right. Um, any other discussion from board members? Is there some resemblance there? <laughs> <laughs> Hair, maybe. No, that's 100 years old. He's been 16. Well, I'm still younger. So. Actually, I think it's more like a trillion or something. Yeah. Okay, if there's no other discussion, I'd entertain a motion that we approve this request. Yeah, I'll make that motion that we approve that request. Do I have a second? And just so we're clear on that, we're going to allow the sign to be the same size as the old one, which is larger than the 42 square feet. And we're going to allow the canopy sign, if you will, want to call it that, but the canopy wrap, I think, is a better term than, than sign. We're going to allow the canopy wrap as presented. And the branding on, and the branding on, the, and dispensers. The, branding on the dispensers. Yes, sir. Okay. So, motion's been made and seconded. John, would you call the roll, please? Roy. Yes. Steve. Yes. Richard. Yes. David. Yes. There you are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We're waiting for our big dinosaur to come in. They've not finished the manufacturing. We yeah. should be there very shortly. Okay. Great. You'll be very happy with us. That's <laughs> what I promise we'll make. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, and the last item is other items of interest, and from what I'm hearing, we all would like Ron to put on the agenda for the next plan commission meeting that they revisit the items such as canopy wrapping and um, fuel, sign, dispensers. fuel dispenser signs. Or maybe convenience stores and fuel dispensing right. stations maybe, in general. Maybe maybe fuel stations conven slash convenience stores in general. Again, so that every time they bring in a new, if they bring in a new trash can and it's got the Sinclair logo on it, we're not considering that a sign. You know, they don't have to come in and say, hey, we're adding another sign. Yeah. Because I think branding to those people is very important. And you're going to see a lot of, I mean, it's nice to have, you know, trash cans there for people to use, and whether it says Sinclair on it or not, I really doesn't bother me. So, but not if you, think you know, even care. even in communities that are pretty restrictive about signage, uh, fueling stations look pretty much the same as everywhere else. So, the most restrictive communities that I've been in don't seem to want to radically alter how they treat this particular business. So, okay. I will I will bring this to the plan commission in their meeting next month and Roy will be there to help carry the yep, banner. I'll, I'll, I'll bring our concerns to the plan commission.
because I've been appointed to serve in that capacity. So, if there's nothing else, yes, sir. At the moment, there is no business that has come forth for the Board of Zoning Appeals for next month. Um, there is business for the Planning Commission next month, not this month, obviously. That will aid the Planning Commission in appointing the vacant position on the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, so if you do not have business and do not meet, then the Planning Commission can appoint their representative, representative to the Board of Zoning mm -hmm. Appeals. If there is some business that comes forth in the next short amount of time that could be on your agenda, we will likely flip the two meetings, hold plan commission first, and then follow that with the Board of Zoning Appeals, and that will permit the plan commission to appoint the vacant seat. Nothing else. We stand adjourned.